108. Now he has a look at 109. And he will get a dart at double just for a change. Only just. 89. And one dart is not enough. Treble 18. Well, just for a change, Ellis Larson is allowed back to the board. 78. Can he make it count? Oh, my double. word, Yella. He has had two darts at double in this entire game, and one of them, he busts first dart into double 15. Game shot. It is 5-0. It's another break, and Yella Clarsen is about to lose to Peter. Rowan Price is the first winner of the day, a 6-1 victory against Radek Zagansky, 97 average. Not bad from the Iceman. As Peter Wright leaves himself on a potential 14 dart leg on throw to close things out. Clarsen isn't going to leave a finish, so Peter Wright has got all the time in the world. Brilliant at the start of this game. Just eased off a little. Oh dear. Become a little bit more of a slog than it 40. threatened to be at the start of the match. But you'd have to say he's been pretty comfortable. 60. The early excellence enough. Double top. And that is enough. And Peter Snake bite right. Came here with a mission to play in everything, play himself back into form. This could get good. It's sort of simmered along this game. It's been close. It's been nip and tuck. It's not been brilliant 100. quality. But all of a sudden, Robert Owen clearing 302 visits. Now they're both hitting 180s. And look at this from Rusty Jake. Oh, for a 138 riposte. Oh, 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 proper darts. Look at this. Rusty Jake Rodriguez with the greatest 138 checkout. Advantage Rusty. Now, is he going to try and be clever here? He is. Moves around the board, ends on the 25, gets down to a finish. Thinking clearly there, Rusty. After a careless error in the last leg that One cost hundred. him matched art, is a chance. Too small a chance. 97. But he leaves himself an even better chance if he's allowed back to the board. Might not be. Double top. Oh, so close. So close for Robert Owen. Double top. Is there. Rusty Jake Rodriguez takes out 70 by that route once again. Those championships were held in Hildesheim. Yeah, real strange day, that one. They pl he's played some excellent darts this year, Luke Woodhouse, but that day, when he played well, it went well. When he played poorly, he still managed to win games. Including that bizarre game with Mensor Suljevic. Burton is still doing enough to keep Whitlock at arm's length, 60. but would have hoped for more in that visit. Find time to find a couple of trebles, but he's not going to do that, and he might not even leave a finish. 42. Doesn't do it. Now Stephen Burton. Bit of breathing space. Single 18. Leaves double top. Oh, my. Oh, dreadful three. dart there for Stephen Burton. And he'll have to burn a dart to get to a double when he returns. Still offering 100. very little, really, in response, Simon Whitlock. Game shot. Suter over on board 15. We'll keep you abreast of what goes on there as Burton puts himself potentially a visit away. Better. Better start. He felt he's had to search for that treble 20. The first start hasn't been there. But he does manage to match the 140. Maybe needed even more than that, though. 60. Burton could have thought that out better and left himself on a 
a hundred. I was going to say a two darter, but I'm sure Dan would have quipped that 104 can be a two darter, so I left it. Won't matter, because that leaves tops. And Stephen Burton gets it done with a 104 checkout. Comes up dry. Mario van der Mahada does not. He finds a treble. He finds two. And his first to a finish in a leg which would see him break the throw and force a decider in which he would have the darts. 59. Well, Mario does not need to try and take this out in this visit. So just stay there. Surely he's not. He's moving down. Well... If he is going to switch from that target, and he's just shown why it was such a good target to leave, going the 19s and then potentially the bullseye after that would have offered him a, a better or some more sensible route down to a double. In the end, the treble 20 last dart has got him to a point where he can level the match and become favourite to win it. Game shot. After really scrappy stuff earlier, he's just gone 11-13. Eleven dart hold, thirteen dart break, and he is going to leave himself potentially on a ten darter here. Oh, it is absolutely incredible, unstoppable for the Belgian. Well, the question is, which Mario do we get now? Do we get the one that carries on in this vein and produces an almost perfect leg, or do we get the one that misses loads of darts at double? He carries on and ends the game. It is a brilliant burst for the line from Mario van den Berharder. He has won the last three legs in 11, 13 and 10 darts. Ninety-five. The treble would have left the bullseye. Peter Wright may only get a go at that 62. target, but many would wager that he would find the treble 18 himself here. And they'd be right to do so. Game shot. And he now leads 4-1. Well, if there is, it's going to rely on Peter Wright doing a lot of missing. 60. A lot of missing. Treble 19, the first port of call. No need to go for a single 12 with Rodriguez outside 59. finishing range. 98. Game shot and the match. And that is job done for Peter Wright. An average just went north of 90 in the end for Snake Bite. 6 5 win against Adam Smith Neil. Rob Cross 6 0 against Brian Roman. Gerwin Price beat Tony Martinez 6 2. Christopher Teischke defeated Cam Crabtree 6 4. A 6 2 win for Josh Rock against Joe Mernon. And a 6 0 win for Ross Smith against Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Stephen Burton. 105. He's closing in a whitewash win of his own here. He actually beat Peter Wright 6 0 here in Hildesheim the last time they met. Is he going to go into the rematch with a 6 0 win under his belt in the pre match? Thirty. Well, he might yet. 98. Mario's made his own mountain. And okay. he will not Drop. get the chance Animates. to climb it. Stephen <laughs> Burton defeats Mario van den Bahada by... He's currently 5-3 down the non-tour card holder to Luke Woodhouse. That second Please, dart of Stephen seven. definitely slipped out of his hand unless he was trying to throw a googly. <laughs> Even Peter Wright, who has been a trendsetter in the last 10 years. Can you believe it's only 10 years since he made that first world final against Michael Van Gerwen? That yeah. is unbelievable. But he's not immune to following the trends of others. Hence, he's using those moulded flight and stem combinations today.
whether he's using them tomorrow is a very different matter. Yeah, the upcoming World Championship will mark that decade anniversary. 140. Crowning glory for MVG, but the, the sort of emergence of Snakebite in his current form. 90. Gone on to even greater things since winning that said title twice. Is he winning this leg? Could be a key shot this at tops. For and that people. miss could give Bertie a three leg cushion against Snakebite again. Get Don't leave him on double 10. He is terrible at tops. It's a, an error. Well, that's something 100. you've got to pounce on if you're Stephen Burton. You've seen the mathematical error. You've seen the execution not get him out of jail. The, you on 188, you've got to get yourself onto a finish. He's done that. And if he takes this out, he's won this match because of a Peter Wright error. Is this the time? Another little bit of awkwardness. 48. Peter Wright must. Must stay straight. Only get out, he's got his treble worn. He doesn't need it. He needs treble 18. <laughs> but this time, treble one is found. It's every visit, every visit, there's been a dodgy dart in the fives or the ones or 29. the twos for good measure. And now Burton wants tops. Game. And he Shot nails tops. Match, and he Burton. nails Peter Wright once again. A 6 4 success. Back to back wins for Bertie against the world number three, Peter Wright. 6 0 last time. Is Rock just finding an e another level now? When you think about Scott's performance today. 96. It's been good against certain opponents, but what kind of level is he going to need against Josh? He might need something like a 158 35. just to maintain the lead at particular times. Another. For double 19. 130. Give it a really good look. He really did. Triple 13 would leave that favoured double 16. Hasn't managed to hit it yet, but he has now. And Rock is in charge. 3-2. Daryl Gurney, 3-1. Or he used to throw a Simon Whitlock dart, but he's remodeled to make it smooth. And he uses it very well, but he might have somebody tapping him on the shoulder, albeit with half a dart as a deficit. Scott must continue to put his foot down, and he will. 100. A brilliant leg, leaving one for one after nine. Rock must get two trebles to leave a finish. There they are. And he's left a two darter. Wow. Wow. Well, Scott is not going to take out the big finish. Can Josh Rock break his heart? He's never led this match, Game but he shot. wins the match. The Unbelievable. 180 to leave 97. Think about that for a second. Unless Price hits the break a little bit, this might just be too much for today. North American flag. Or well, flags. 60. Flown very, very high today with the likes of Jules Van Dongen, Jeff, and Matt. But the Welsh flag is flying higher in this encounter. Players' Championship played in this building in the last Nine. four years. We have never had someone win more than one of them. And everybody who's left hasn't won here in a Players' Championship Five. before. So it will be a new name. Double top. And that name could be Gerwin Price, considering how Price. good that performance was. In two games he's ever played against Jeff Smith, he's only lost one leg. ...from getting a match shot in the last leg. That was masterful. It's the kind of thing you need to do to win tournaments. Yeah, you just need... It's timing. I mean, ultimately, what we 90. mean by timing is luck. Getting your good darts when you really need them.
but some players seem to have a knack of them turning up just when they need them. The very best do it on a regular basis because they throw more good darts. Can he produce some good darts here? Single 18. Leaves double top for 3-1. And shot. Josh Rock, that's good. Less and less competitive stuff. And you start sinking and sinking and sinking. At the minute, Josh Rock, without being brilliant, is being good enough to just keep Danny Van Tripe at arm's length here. We can talk yet again about 79. what he's done today, but ultimately the best players in the world just do enough against the person in front of them. They're not t thinking about what they've done previously in the day. Right now, Josh is just managing this time. game. Unfortunately, only two darts register there, leaving 85. But he is getting a look at it for 5-1. Yeah, Danny Van Tripe's got to take Eight, a chunk out of this. That is an important last dart for Danny Van Tripe, or it could be. 16 segment. That leaves the bullseye. 60. This has got to go out. Can't miss singles at this stage of a tournament. 12. And he couldn't miss that tops. You can't see Josh missing this for a four-leg cushion. It's going to be double 12. Game shot. Told you you wouldn't miss. Experience at this stage is so vital. Well, Danny Van Tripp is only the third leg that he's had darts to win. He only got one dart at it. That brilliant 112 average performance against jo uh, Ryan Joyce. And then finding a way to beat Connor Scott in a high-quality game that went all the way to a last-leg decider and producing some brilliance at the end. But the rest of today, he has not looked anywhere no, like... Exactly. The Josh Rock, who's been right up there with the best players in the world in terms of the averages and results on the tour ever since he showed up. When you look at both players, I look at Danny and he looks fresher to me than Josh, but Josh is more effective. And maybe he's a better player when he's slightly under stress. Now, we talked about that 277 in five at the end of the scut game in the last 16 this would be for 268 in five to win and to make the final he just has a knack of doing it at the end of really important matches he didn't have to get that one but he does it anyway and with an average just over 88 he takes out 88 with his